What's up everyone, Tara Roberts here with 444 and we are talking hidden sleepers poised to deliver. But before we get started, be sure to like this video and subscribe. And if you want more fantasy insights and tips, head over to 444.com slash plans and sign up for a subscription today. And exclusively for our YouTube audience, use promo code YouTube at checkout to save 20%. 5%. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. For our first player, this is not related to the recent reports around the possibility that Kenneth Gainwell could see the bulk of early down work because he's been getting most of the first team carries in recent Eagles practices. Again, I repeat, this is not camp hype. This is a take that I have had all off season, and there is validity around why he's the back to own in Philadelphia. In theory, Penny and Swift should have the inside track, but neither one of them is reliable. It's almost a no brainer to use a dart throw in late rounds on Kenneth Gamewell, because if history repeats, Gamewell has about five weeks before he sees a shot at the lead back role in season. Gamewell is a smaller back, and that's led people to believe that he is simply a receiving back, but he has shown three down back capability and despite his size, he has been utilized at the goal line and done so successfully. Gainwell is a legitimate deep sleeper with actual RB1 upside. We'll move on from a deep, deep sleeper to someone who is a bit more shallow but still hidden, Rashad Bateman. It seems crazy to call a guy who was legit the Ravens wide receiver one last year a hidden sleeper, but he truly technically is. ADPs vary by platform greatly when it comes to such undefined receiving cores, but very few platforms see Bateman going as the first Ravens wide receiver off the board. Zay Flowers is being drafted at wide receiver 46. Odell Beckham Jr. is currently going at wide receiver 47 and Bateman is wide receiver 53. In 2022, Bateman got off to an interesting start with double digit fantasy points and a touchdown in each of his first two games. But two games later, he suffered an injury and his season was derailed. Now, I love Zay Flowers as a potential breakout within this offense and Odell is Odell. But Bateman could be a hidden gem here. He might have real upside if he can manage to retain a prominent role within the receiving core. Let's talk about a late round tight end with legitimate top 12 upside. All eyes are on Dalton Kincaid as the potential breakout rookie tight end, but Sam Laporta might be the guy who really pops here. Laporta steps into an immediate tight end one role within Detroit's offense. And while catching passes from Jared Goff isn't as enticing as being a target for Josh Allen, Laporta's path to targets is just flat out easier and he comes at a much cheaper ADP. And don't discount the upside within the Lions offense. The Lions had higher pass volume than the Bills in 2022. They just had slightly lower touchdowns, but not that much. There was no true second or even true third within this offense, and targets and yards were just spread out pretty much beyond Amon Ross St. Brown. We expected Jamison Williams to step up and assume this wide receiver two role within the offense, but we gotta wait six weeks for that. If Sam Laporta can get off to a strong start, he can carve out a role within this offense that he can retain through the entire season. Let's go ahead and talk about another tight end that is extremely well hidden with legitimate upside to deliver strong value for your fantasy team, Mike Gesicki. There is a very simple reason here. Unlike Sam Laporta, we've got ample evidence that Gesicki has top 10 upside. In 2019, Gesicki was tight end 12. He followed that up with tight end 7. And in 2021, he was tight end 9 in a season that was a struggle with touchdowns, but he had extremely strong receptions, 73 receptions, 112 targets. He has the ability to play as a wide receiver, and it gives him such strong upside. Now, 2022 was a huge letdown, and because of that, we are getting a massive discount on Gesicki's ADP. But last year's performance wasn't truly on Gesicki. Gesicki was inherited by Mike McDaniels, and unfortunately, he was a terrible fit for McDaniels scheme. So he essentially got phased out of the offense by no real fault of his own. But in New England, they signed Gesicki knowing his capabilities and the role that he should play within an offense. And to be blunt, New England has one of the worst receiving cores in the NFL. Gesicki can play a critical role as a pass catcher and return to his previous upside and give very strong value for your fantasy team. For this next player, I go back and forth regularly on who I'm targeting from the Texans. Make no mistake, the Texans will not be a good team. So don't go snatching up every single piece and filling up your bench with these Texan start throws, but there will be a receiver within this offense that provides strong fantasy value at a very discounted ADP. Nico Collins is the safest option within the offense and is likely the most stable. 
John Mechie is also an excellent sleeper candidate in technically his first year of play. But Tank Dell is a guy that you can take a late round swing in and have big upside potential with him. Dell has upside because Dell has it all. Strong athleticism, strong hands, technically strong routes and impressive college production, over 100 receptions, near 1,400 yards in his final season at Houston. The only thing that has kept him from being a much higher pick is his size. Unfortunately, he is very small. But Dell has been putting on a clinic in training camp and he opened up everyone's eyes in the Texans preseason game where Dell had five receptions on 65 yards and a touchdown and flat out just looked like he was a player that will thrive on game day. Because he's so undersized, he's got a very discounted ADP, but if he can overcome the size issue, he has got the talent to play big on your fantasy team. Let's close things out with a hidden sleeper specifically for Superflex, Sam Howell. Sam Howell hasn't been given the official starting job yet, but as I'm drafting players from Washington, I am drafting with the assumption that Howell will win this job. The second year quarterback got one start last season, and obviously you cannot base anything off of just one start in the final game of a season. But we got a couple of positives from that start, including five rushing attempts with a rushing touchdown. And reports out of training camp have been very positive around Howell. There is definitely going to be some growing pains here because this will essentially be Howell's first year of play. And everything that he learned within Washington's offense last year is being scrapped with Eric Bieniemy now leading the offense. But there is legitimate upside for Howell as QB2 in Superflex. Howell has a strong supporting cast. Terry McLaurin has been a consistent wide receiver one threat who has always had that upside, but it's been capped by poor quarterback play. Jahan Dotson is coming off a limited but very strong rookie campaign. And the Washington run game isn't fun for fantasy purposes, but it is deep in terms of talent. This is not a terrible situation for Howell, and they're a team that will need to push offensive volume due to the division that they play in and their schedule. And while he'll likely have some consistency issues, his legs offer interesting interesting upside that could deliver big value at his ADP. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and comment below who your favorite deep sleeper is. And if you want more fantasy insights and tips, head over to 444.com slash plans and sign up for a subscription today and exclusive for our YouTube audience. Use promo code YouTube at checkout to save 25% off.